All right, so we will get started with Ron Nuremberg. Chair Huffman and members of the State Affairs Committee, thank you for the opportunity to be here today. The City of San Antonio stands with other communities in opposition to Senate Bill 3 and Senate Bill 91 by Senator Kolkhorst. San Antonio is a welcoming and inclusive place where people from many backgrounds and beliefs come together to make it a great place to live and to visit. These bills are in direct conflict with these values we hold as a community. The legislation puts transgender people in the crosshairs of, dis of discrimination in an attempt to protect children and women from a problem that clearly does not exist. This legislation threatens the state's economy and lives of citizens we all represent because discrimination is as bad for business as it is for the safety of the most vulnerable members of our community. SB 3 and SB 91 would create the highly negative and harmful perception that San Antonio and Texas are not open and hospitable places. Like all Texas cities, San Antonio competes for business, relocations, conventions, and major sporting events. This bill impedes our ability to compete. We also focus on economic development efforts tar on targeted industries such as advanced manufacturing, information technology, cybersecurity, and healthcare, and this bill will stunt the growth of the San Antonio and Texas new economies. San Antonio educators also united against this legislation. Bear County superintendents representing 15 school districts have signed a letter voicing opposition to this legislation, and you have at your dais letters from our business community, as well as you've, you've heard the testimony from our Chambers of Commerce, President and CEO, as well as the President and CEO of Visit San Antonio. But in the end, proponents of the bill have stated that this is geared toward public safety. You have at your dais a letter from Police Chief William McManus stating that sexual assault in public restrooms is not a problem in San Antonio. Multiple state laws already criminalize the conduct that this bill purports to address. In other, in other words, SB 3 and SB 91 are fixes in search of a problem. We implore you to stand against this legislation. Thank you, Mayor. And I apologize for not addressing you as Mayor when you sat down. Quite I, all right. I don't think we've ever met, and I wasn't glad, didn't have my glasses, not glancing the card. Thank so you, welcome. Sir. Thank you. Madam Chair. Yes, Senator Zafford. Welcome, Mayor. Thank you. How long have you been Mayor of the City of San Antonio now? About a month. About a month. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I don't know you. <laughs> so this is your first Senate hearing. Uh, it is not. I've served on the City Council since 2013. No, but you've been to the Senate hearings before to testify? Not on this particular legislation, no, in previous ones. Right. You heard the testimony, of course, of other representatives of the City of San Antonio. Do you have any information to add regarding the, the economic impact on the City of San Antonio should this legislation pass? Only just to underscore uh, not just the economic impact, which we've already felt just by the proposal of this legislation, which we know is in roughly about $3 million direct economic impact, but the daily emails and phone calls and concerns uh, from members of our community, many, many who, of whom you've heard from already and will continue to hear from throughout the day about this, uh, this legislation that again uh, uses the fear of issues that do not arise unless these bad laws are put on the books. And your written testimony says that this would impair our ability to compete across the nation. Could you give us specific examples of how passing this legislation would impede that competitive ability? Besides the already direct impact from convention business and visitor business that have already pulled out of San Antonio and Texas, uh, we know that we have uh, many concerns, calls uh, to our visit San Antonio offices and to the city of San Antonio about what happens if uh, this legislation is passed. Uh, we know that we are competing uh, for not just the NCAA Final Four that's coming here in 2018, which is already here, and we know what the NCAA has done in its past, uh, but we're also working to compete for future convention business and Final Four business and major sporting events. Um, again, we don't expect uh, to see direct economic impact the day that this is passed, but the, the way that convention and visitor business works is that we're already competing for business four or five years from now, and they're already telling us they will not come uh, if Texas passes the, these laws. How would these bills or passage of these bills impact the sports community, specifically the San Antonio Spurs and other sports organizations in San Antonio or throughout the state? Well, San Antonio prides itself on being an inclusive place, uh, being a place where we work to be free from discrimination. And our major businesses, um, many of whom have signed on to a letter that you have at your desks, uh, are against 
our tech community has uh, been testifying and, and appearing here at the Capitol. Uh, our major employers are all united against uh, this legislation, and, and that's why I'm here. I represent them. I represent the members of our community that this legislation targets, uh, and I will continue to do so uh, to uh, try and avoid uh, this from becoming law. Do you know of any issue or problem in the city of San Antonio that would be resolved or corrected by passing this legislation? None whatsoever. And if there is a public safety argument to be made, it has been done by the city of San Antonio Police Chief William McManus, uh, who states pretty defin definitively that there is no problem that this would solve. Okay. Thank you, Mary. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Menendez. Thank you, Madam Chair. I want to thank our new mayor, Mayor Ron Nuremberg, for being here with us. It was good to see you and your family and the whole city, most of the city council at the Pride Parade recently. I want to say that uh, this letter that you brought us from the chief seems to answer the question because you ran on the issue of public safety. And therefore, I know that you would do nothing that would cause uh, any, any, any member of our community to be unsafe. Um, I've spoken to some of the largest employers that we have in, in San Antonio, and I've asked them, one of whom's got about 400 locations around the state, one of the largest employers we have. And I said, do you have a problem with people entering the wrong bathroom for any situation? They said, we never have a problem with this happening. And so, Mayor, uh, you're t you've taken your time to be here and sit and listen. Um, I think at the end of the day, you would never propose doing something, just even if it were costing us hundreds of millions of dollars, which we know it will, if it would cause anyone to be less safe, correct? That's right. I mean, I think that um, everyone in the state speaks uh, economics, um, and we all hopefully uh, speak on human rights terms as well. But um, the common denominator should be uh, the fact that this is discriminatory legislation, um, and discrimination is not good for the economy. And, and the sad thing about that is that it's it's packaged, and I don't think it's intended to be, but that is the net impact. That's the net effect. It's packaged in, in this uh, creating a safer situation, but in, in the net effect is, is causing some folks to be less safe. And that's that's why I think so many of us are going are, are against this legislation. And I want to thank you for being here. I, I, last question. Are you aware of the letter that was signed? And I think it was signed late yesterday. It was written by some of the largest employers in San Antonio, many conservative business leaders, uh, Zachary, Newstar, Valero, many, many of them. I, I don't have all of them, but I understand it was more than a dozen uh, that sent in opposition to this. Uh, yes, and in fact, we are all very proud of them for that. Um, they, uh, they sent me a copy of the letter. Uh, that's also why you heard from the president and CEO of uh, the San Antonio Chamber of Commerce. Uh, the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce is here as well. Uh, the Texas Association of Business uh, is here. Uh, they represent San Antonio and we represent them. And every one of our school districts in Bear County is opposed as well, correct? That's correct. Fifteen school districts signed on to a letter that you should have at your desk as well. Mayor, thank you for everything you're doing to make our city a, a better place to raise a family and to live. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. All right. Um, we have Lisa Chair, Chair Huffman. Yes, I, I have a quick, recognize. quick question. And I mean, maybe Senator Menendez, being from San Antonio, you may know this better. Um, do you know of how your 15 school districts voted on um, in the UIL each, um, I think it is each uh, principal of now, each superintendent gets to vote on um, uh, policies. Uh, there was a policy February 20, uh, February 2016 about uh, the inclusiveness or non-inclusiveness of uh, males uh, participating in female sports. Do you know how they voted? I don't have a clue, but what I will do is my staff's in the office listening to this both in San Antonio and here, and we'll get the answer yeah. for you to, uh, I, later today. I, I would like to know how they feel about uh, males being able to compete in uh, women's sports, girls' sports. We will get that UIL. answer to you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. All right, thank you. Lisa Schoeps.